so thankful to be with you for this episode of the program. Watch, therefore, I have a question for you. Are you ready? Can you hold your liquor? Oh, I don't mean L-I-Q-U-O-R. I mean, can you hold your L-I-C-K-E-R? You know, the Bible says that life and death is in the power of the tongue. And that's what I'll be talking about today. Let's have a word of prayer together. Oh, Holy Father in heaven, in our great soon coming Messiah, King Jesus name, thank you for this special time we have together. Please tremendously bless all of our viewers. Holy Father, I ask it in Messiah Jesus name. Amen. Well, frequently on the program, I teach Bible prophecy. Uh, I talk a lot about the rapture. Our Savior Jesus told us to watch, therefore, to watch for him to come for us in the rapture and to be ready. Also, what I do is I share teachings from the Word of God that will help us to be ready as we're watching and that would help us have a testimony where others can come to faith in Messiah Jesus, a life ready to reach others with the gospel. And as I continue in this teaching in the book of James, that by the way, I have already shared at our Calvary Chapel Watch Therefore Community Fellowship in Pearland, Texas, and a pastor is inviting you to church right now. If you're in the Houston area, come join us at Calvary Chapel Watch Therefore Community Fellowship. So in James chapter 3, uh, we're going to learn about the untamable tongue. I would say with one exception, the untamable tongue with one exception. Let's begin in James chapter 3. My brethren, let not many of you become teachers, knowing that we shall receive a stricter judgment. For we all stumble in many things. If anyone does not stumble in word, he's a perfect man. That means mature, a mature man, able also to bridle the whole body. Indeed, we put bits in horses' mouths, that they may obey us, and we turn their whole body. Look also at ships, although they are so large and are driven by fierce winds, they are turned by a very small rudder, wherever the pilot desires. Even so the tongue is a little member and boasts great things. See how great a forest a little fire kindles? Well, in verse 1, we are told that those who teach about the Lord and His things and His ways and His word will have a stricter judgment from Him than others will. The teacher's words represent or misrepresent the Lord and His ways. In verse 2 and 3, we see that we all stumble in many things. To not stumble in our words expresses great maturity in our Christ's walk. And as you can imagine, someone with uh, this teaching platform can do great good and bless people tremendously, but can also do great harm. And, and we all stumble in many ways, but if we, if we can walk this faith walk in Messiah Jesus without stumbling in our words, it's very, very significant. Yes, and, and, and the tongue controls the direction of our bodies and lives. So if we can have that tongue under control, it controls and directs our lives. The horse's little bridle turns the huge beast's entire body. In verse 4 and 5, in the same way, massive sail ships are turned by a little rudder wherever the pilot desires. The little tongue boasts great things and burns down a forest burns down a force. Trouble goes from zero to 100 with just a few hot words. James continues, and the tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity. The tongue is so set among our members that it defiles the whole body and sets on fire the course of nature, and it is set on fire by hell. For every kind of beast and bird of reptile and creature of the sea is tamed and has been tamed by mankind, but no man can tame the tongue. It is an unruly evil full of deadly poison, a fire, and a world of iniquity. Iniquity being lawlessness and extreme sin. It defiles the entire body and burns down the course of nature, and it's set on fire by hell. 
I think we should listen, especially as we're preparing for this King, this Savior to come for us, as all the signs around us point to his coming for us. Did you know that wars, divorces, and church splits have something in common? That's right, wars, divorces, and church splits have something in common. Oftentimes, they're started and end by very hot words. They start and end by very hot words. Of course, wars start that way, and divorces start and end that way, and church splits start and end that way. Man has such God-given strength to make and rule over God's creatures, but no man in his natural resources can tame the human tongue. It's an unruly evil full of deadly poison. And we continue in chapter 3, verse 9. With it we bless our God and Father, and with it we curse men who have been made in the similitude of God. Out of the same mouth proceed blessing and cursing. My brethren, these things ought not to be so. Does a spring send forth fresh water and bitter from the same opening? Can a fig tree, my brethren, bear olives, or a grapevine bear figs? Thus no spring yields both salt water and fresh to bless God our Father. And then curse men made in God's image out of the same mouth. Come blessing and cursing. These things ought not to be so. Fresh water and bitter water coming out of our mouths. Our Savior told us we can know the tree or the person by their fruit. And I've had people tell me, well, no, only God knows what's in my heart. Well, well, no, actually, we, we all know what's in your heart because it comes out of your mouth. James uses so many different powerful analogies because this is so important. And remember, James 1, chapter 1, verse 26 says, if anyone among you thinks he's religious and does not bridle his tongue but deceives his own heart, this one's religion is useless. So here is an action plan. Here's an assignment for us all, not just you, but me too. In this coming week, Let's think very carefully about our words. And and why can a disciple of Messiah Jesus control the untamable tongue when we're told that no man can? Because we have a comforter who's also called the helper, the Holy Spirit. And we can walk by the filling of the Holy Spirit. Listen to Galatians chapter 5. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control against such there is no law. So even this week, as we go and walk out our lives, let's begin now to be much more careful with our words and that we would ask our Father in heaven, fill us with the Holy Spirit, Father and Messiah, Jesus' name, that I might take control, that I might hold my liquor. Yes, yes. It's so important, folks. It's so important because our words bring life, as I mentioned at the beginning of the program, or they bring death. They can bring people to Messiah Jesus or keep people away from Messiah Jesus. They can bring unity in the body of Messiah, starting in our own homes. Hello. Uh, The founder of Calvary Chapels, Chuck Smith said, if it's not working at home, don't export it, (laughs) right? And so let's begin now. Let's begin even now with our words. Let's hold our liquor. Remember, watch therefore and be ready. King Jesus is coming for us any moment. I will be right back, Lord willing. I wanna take a moment to say thank you to those who prayerfully and financially partner with Watch Therefore Ministries. Without you, we could not do this exciting and effective and timely kingdom work. The Lord certainly has raised you up for such a time as this. And again, thank you. In Matthew 24, our great Savior Jesus 
speaks of a faithful, wise, and blessed servant who's watching for the master to come and doing what the master commanded. My aim for this television ministry and all of our ministries is to make faithful servant disciples of Messiah Jesus who will hear him say to them, well done, thy good and faithful servant. And one of the ways we walk that out is through Romans 1.16, taking the gospel and discipleship to the Jew first and then to the nations. To the Jew first with our ministry, Blessing Israeli Believers, co-founded by our ministry partner, John McTurnan and myself. We're working through our Israeli believing partners who are getting out the gospel, making disciples of Messiah Yeshua, planting believing congregations, helping to save babies from abortion, and also helping Holocaust survivors in the name of Messiah Yeshua and much more. And then to the nations through our ministry, Poured Out for the Nations, where we're serving in African countries. I personally have served in 10 African countries and in India through one of our believing partners and also in America and through this Watch Therefore telecast all over the world. And one of the ways you can keep up with what's going on in this ministry is through our monthly Blessing Israeli Believers and Poured Out for the Nation's newsletters. I write about things that will help us to watch therefore and be ready, and also news and updates about what's going on here in Israel through our partners and in the nations. Oh, it's an exciting way also to keep up with what you can be praying for, for our prayer partners and what you're giving into for those who sow financially into this ministry. And I wanna talk about that for a moment. And as I talk about financial giving, first I wanna say, as always, if you haven't yet believed in our great savior, Jesus, please don't send any money into this ministry. It's simply our desire that you would be our guest watching the program today and that you would receive Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior. And for those who would like to lay up their treasures in heaven, who understand principles of giving and sowing into the kingdom of God, if this is a place the Lord's called you to do so, there's three primary platforms through which you can give. Our Watch Therefore television ministry, blessing Israeli believers, and poured out for the nations. And you can do so through our website, watchtherefore.tv, and also through the post, through snail mail, at our P.O. box by check. And what a great way to lay your treasures up in heaven. Having said all these things, remember today more than ever, watch therefore and be ready. Our King and Savior Jesus is coming for us any moment. I was living in Israel at the Sea of Galilee, ministering across the Holy Land through our ministry partners, and the Lord was calling my family back to the USA, to Texas, with a vision. And part of that vision is to plant a church where we make faithful, wise, blessed, servant disciples of Messiah Jesus who are watching and ready for him to come and take us back to that place he's been preparing for us. He said, watch therefore and be ready. You don't know the hour or the day your Lord is coming, coming for us in the rapture to take us back to the Father's house. Look what the Lord has done. We had no money, we had no people, we had no building. And now the Lord's given us a handful, a few ministry prayer partners here in Texas. We've been joining together for prayer and asking the Lord for the way forward. And we're starting with our first Sunday here in January, Calvary Chapel. Watch therefore Community Fellowship. Now listen, this costs a lot of money and we know that our help comes from the Lord, maker of heaven and earth. Maybe he would have you participate in this Watch Therefore Community Fellowship under the banner of Calvary Chapel. And you can do so. Go to calvarychapelwtcf.com. Ask the Lord if he would have you to prayerfully and or financially participate in this new church plant. Oh, we're gonna make disciples who are watching and ready for King Jesus to come for us. Watch therefore and be ready. Welcome back to this episode of the program, Watch Therefore. We're looking at James chapter three, remembering that life and death is in the power of the tongue. And I'm gonna review read just some of the verses that we looked at in the first part of the program, beginning in James three, verse six. And the tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity. The tongue is so set 
among our members that it defiles the whole body and sets on fire the course of nature, and it is set on fire by hell for every kind of beast and bird of reptile and creature of the sea is tamed and has been tamed by mankind, but no man can tame the tongue. It is an unruly evil, full of deadly poison. With it we bless our God and Father, and with it we curse men who have been made in the similitude of God. Out of the same mouth proceed blessing and cursing, my brother, and these things ought not to be so. Does a spring send forth fresh water and bitter from the same opening? Can a fig tree, my brother, and bear olives, or a grapevine bear figs? Thus no spring yields both salt water and fresh. And now... We continue in James 3, and we look at heavenly versus demonic wisdom, beginning in verse 13. Who is wise and understanding among you? Let him show by good conduct that his works are done in the meekness of wisdom. In James 1, we're taught to ask our heavenly Father for wisdom and to faithfully walk in the wisdom that he gives us. Here's a gauge of for heavenly wisdom and understanding. Understanding God's word in ways, the knowledge of the Lord, helps us to apply that knowledge, that knowing Him in our conduct. That is walking in wisdom. Meekness is an expression of that wisdom. Before Messiah Jesus, who is the most meek man on the earth? Well, it was Moses. And think of the grace and the mercy and the power the Lord could trust with his man Moses. Then think of the most powerful man who ever lived, Messiah Jesus. See the powerful miracles and the grace and mercy our Father entrusted with him. And then understand that our Lord and Savior Jesus... He wants to entrust you and me with great wisdom, understanding, and meekness, and power, and grace as we dispense the person of our Savior Jesus and his great love with the gospel, the good news of Messiah Jesus. Oh, do we need wisdom, understanding, and meekness for our identity and our calling and our work as we prepare for the Savior Jesus to come for us. Now, first, let's see what short circuits our godly conduct. But if you have bitter envy and self-seeking in your hearts, do not boast and lie against the truth. This wisdom does not descend from above, but is earthly, sensual, demonic. For where envy and self-seeking exist, confusion and every evil thing are there. You see, a bitterly envious and self-seeking heart demonstrates a counterfeit wisdom that is certainly not heavenly. We need to remember something pertaining to this unique generation, our time, that we are the second Timothy chapter three generation. In the last days, Perilous times will come. Here we are in that generation. And then there are all these terrible characteristics of the society of that time that stands under the umbrella of men will be lovers of themselves. So we see this wisdom is from our three enemies, the world, earthly, the flesh, sensual, and the devil, demonic. And one way to identify this counterfeit wisdom is that it produces confusion and every evil thing. Hello sounds like today's news, doesn't it? Yes. Now, let's see the heavenly wisdom. But the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, willing to yield, full of mercy and good fruits, with our, without partiality and without hypocrisy. Now the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace by those who make peace. Heavenly wisdom is first pure. And listen, I heard uh, something that stuck with me from years ago from a Calvary Chapel pastor I was listening to. 
with regard to purity. He said, here is a simple definition of purity, that which is without mixture, that which is without mixture, peaceable, brings peace, not conflict, gentle. Listen to Philippians chapter 4 as the Apostle Paul is speaking and writing, let your gentleness be known to all men. The Lord is at hand, willing to yield. You want to go first? Fine, fine. Willing to yield, full of mercy, not giving people what they deserve. Not giving people what they deserve. Good fruits, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control, the fruit of the Spirit. Without partiality and hypocrisy, that demonstrates pure motives. And verse 18 of James 3 there, the wisdom from above produces the fruit of righteousness. Righteousness, heaven's standard of goodness. And, and remember from James chapter 1 that the wrath of man does not achieve the righteousness of God. But what does? The wisdom of God that's from above. So, here's another assignment. This coming week, while we're watching our words, should we also consider our conduct? While we're watching our wor words, being careful to speak rightly, should we also watch and consider our conduct. And we see the fruit of righteousness. It's sown in peace by those who make peace. Blessed are the peacemakers, our Savior Jesus said. First and foremost, can there, there can be no peace any other way. Is peace between God and man. We come into this world, we are born into this world in Adam and his sin at war with God. And as we grow up into sinful maturity, we shake our fist in God's face, right? Yes. Well, I never did that, really. Have you ever lied? Have you ever cursed God's name? Have you ever stolen? Yes. Have you ever blasphemed? So, which of course is cursing God's name. Uh, have, have you walked in a way that is against God's ways? We all have. We all have. Well, I haven't. Well, remember, lying's a sin. <laughs> yes? And, and, and so, the first piece that has to come before there can be peace is peace with God. Yes, through the gospel of Messiah Jesus. Waving the white flag, receiving him as Lord and Savior. And then peace can be made between men and men, right? Or men and women, for example, in the marriage. And so, here's the question. Have you truly made peace with God? You've heard that term, maybe someone is sick and dying. Well, they made their peace with God. Well, there's only one way to do that, and that is to repent of our sins. Change our mind about our sin and begin to turn from it in our heart and mind, which will bear fruit and that we'll turn away from our sins in our conduct and in our lives. Yet, as we begin to, this, begin to come to the, the table of reconciliation, we repent of our sins and we receive Jesus as Lord, believing that he died on the cross for our sins and rose from the grave. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Have you done that? Have you truly made peace with our Father in heaven? by accepting his only terms of peace, but it is full reconciliation, full forgiveness, and eternal life that we get from that reconciliation. Have you made peace with God by receiving Jesus as your Lord and Savior, believing he died on the cross for your sins and rose again? Today you can do that. Whoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. You can be forgiven for every and any sin right now, just receive Jesus as Lord, and you'll have eternal life. And if you're doing that now, calling upon the name of the Lord Jesus, Lord, please forgive me and give me this eternal life. I believe in you. I'm going to follow you. If you're doing that, there's information at the bottom of your screen. Contact us. We want to send you a brochure, a, a, a free brochure, How to Begin Your New Life in Christ. It will help you get started. 
following Messiah Jesus in this new eternal life. And for everyone who's watching, remember now more than ever, watch therefore and be ready. King Jesus is coming for us any moment. I have some big news. I've written books which are very important for disciples of Messiah Jesus to help us watch therefore and be ready. This ministry's flagship book is Watch Therefore and Be Ready. And here's the big news. I have just received my first shipment of the second edition with the updated title underscoring the urgency of our time. Watch Therefore and Be Ready Today. This second edition not only has some much needed touching up, but also important updates since many prophetic scenarios have taken place since I first wrote the book. Truly, this is the new and improved version, so I encourage everyone watching to get a copy of Watch Therefore and Be Ready Today. With a donation of any amount to Watch Therefore, Blessing Israeli Believers, or Poured Out for the Nations, you can receive a copy of Watch Therefore and Be Ready Today. Make sure to note in the memo section of your check or online giving, Watch Therefore book or simply WT book. Truly, this book will help you watch therefore and be ready today. Thank you for watching the program today. Watch Therefore is sponsored by the friends and partners of Watch Therefore Ministries. In future programs, we'll have many more Watch Therefore teachings from the Bible, worship, and exciting interviews with our believing partners in Israel and around the world. Please contact us at doveforisrael at gmail.com. That's D-O-V-F-O-R-I-S-R-A-E-L at gmail.com. And if you would like to subscribe to our newsletter, you can fill out a contact form on the website watchtherefore.tv. We also have audio programs available on our website watchtherefore.tv. We are on social media since it is a great tool to share the gospel and communicate with one another. You can also find us there at Watch Therefore TV. Until next time, we're watching for King Jesus to return. Watch Therefore and be ready. Slain, he'll come again. Our conquering king on that day. His sword will go forth to take back and restore what belongs. What belongs to our Lord.